I didn't want to talk about truth, and I didn't want to talk about the opposite of truth. I wanted to talk about the pain. So we talked about the pain last week, which the pain should bring us to the point of repentance. The repentance should bring us to the point of salvation, and salvation should bring us to the point of God's presence, amen? That there should be something, because we all experience pain, right? Uh, We don't all experience truth, right? And we don't always experience the opposite of truth, amen? But we do all experience pain. And I believe that, you know, I wanted that pain to be, you know, us to be aware of the pain because I want that pain to, to bring us into the presence of God through repentance and through salvation so we can have a relationship because we, we experience the pain. And whether it's good, whether it's bad, there's pain in life. And, and the pain is a result of a lot of times of, of wrong choices, amen, of not allowing the truth within our lives. But today I want to talk about the truth. I, I really want us to talk about the truth and what is the truth. And, and I want us to open up our hearts because the truth talks if we let it. Did you get that? The truth talks if we let it. Because Jesus spoke the truth to many, but yet they've not received their salvation. Right? We read it in the Bible. Here's the truth. He speaks the truth. But they can't see the truth because of everything else. So what is the truth? Which brings me to the scripture, John 18, 37 through 38. Pilate therefore said to him, are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king, for this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. So he should bear witness to the truth. So it tells me the world's full of lies, amen? Amen. That means it's distorted. That means there's corruption. That means there's things within the world that, because whether, if, if it was all truth, then Jesus wouldn't need to come, right? Jesus wouldn't need to be able to explain the truth and be the truth. But, but it says that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. So everyone that hears the truth will hear the voice of Jesus. And, and, and we have to understand what is truth. And, and I love what Pilate said. Pilate said to him, what is truth? What is truth? He's standing right before Jesus and he says, what is truth? How many times we stand right before the word of God and we know right and wrong and we say, what is truth? What is truth? So I want to talk to you today about what is truth because this is what Pilate said, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault in him at all. I find no fault in him at all. So, but before we talk about truth, And what is truth? We really need to talk about the opposite. Because I believe that we're more familiar with the opposite of truth than we are the truth. Because we live in the world, amen? We we live sometimes of the world. Uh, We're in the midst of the the, the world. Uh, We can't get away from the world, right? Right? Uh, we're going you know, to walk into conversations that we don't like. We're going to walk into situations we don't like. We're going to get angry. We're going we're gonna to see things. Uh, uh, you know, the enemy's here in the midst of, uh, of the, the world. Uh, the author of lies, Satan himself, he was in the midst of the garden. He had to be in the midst of the garden or else there was no free will. There wasn't a choice for God's children. That means we would be dictated to love God. And he didn't want anyone to worship him out of a command because he wanted us to worship him out of a, all of free will because we choose him. But we live in a society where, where there's, there's lies, right? Let's just talk real. It, the opposite of truth is a lie. That means adultery is a lie. That means jealousy is a lie. Fear is a lie. Stealing is a lie. It, it, it's all a lie. See, we live within lies, witchcraft, manipulation, imperfection. And all these, all these things that are basically bundled underneath a lie because you can only serve one master. And it's a master of truth or it's a master of lies. Amen? So you know, everything is grouped in, into lies because Satan is nothing but the author of of lies and we have to understand that that if we attach ourselves to these lies and everything else that's what produces disobedience right yeah. see the opposite is something we need to focus on the flesh is familiar with it the flesh craves it the flesh enjoys it the flesh falls for it that's what we're talking about what is truth well in order to understand what is truth we have to understand what is the opposite of truth Because sometimes we're more comfortable with the opposite of truth than we are the truth. Because if I live in the world, some of the world can come upon me, right? Have you ever lied? 
Have you ever stole? Have you ever lusted? He without any sin gets to leave now and go to the buffet. So we're all here. We've all experienced that, right? We've all experienced the opposite. We've all lived part of the opposite. We, we, we probably have some of it within us. I, I know I'm still dealing with some. I, I still have a thorn in my side that, that there's some things that I'm still dealing with. But I have to realize what the opposite is. See, truth is not defined by what we believe. Think about it. How many things do we believe in? But that doesn't mean it's true. Oh, pastor, I believe in Jesus Christ. Well, just because you believe in Jesus Christ, that's not the reason why it's truth. Jesus Christ, without sin, is God Almighty. That's why he's the truth. It's not because we believe it's because he's the truth. We believe because he is the truth. That's why we believe. Just because you believe in something doesn't mean it's true. Just because you believe the grass is going to grow purple doesn't mean it's true. So believing doesn't mean anything about truth because there's a lot of things that we believe in. Amen. I I, I believe that I can fly, but if I'm not on the airplane, it's not going to work, is it? It's going to have a splat if I jump. But I can believe it. How about feelings? Too many times we're basing our decisions on feelings and emotions instead of truth because I, I can feel something, but just because I feel it doesn't mean it's truth. I, I can feel like sleeping around, but doesn't mean that that's truth. I, I can feel that this is good, but doesn't mean, uh, boy, those Oreos feel really good going down. But the truth is, is they're going to put some pounds on, amen? That's not going to do your body good, amen? I, just because I feel it doesn't mean it's true. So what is truth? What is truth? Do you see how, how we can live into the world and, and what we think we think is true? Just because I thought it, that means it has to be true. How many things have you thought of that wasn't true? So what is truth? You know, you can smell something that doesn't mean it's true, right? How many times have you walked in the kitchen, you smelled something, and it was opposite cooking? And you're like, oh, Jesus, McDonald's tonight. Or, yeah, amen, that's going to be awesome, right? How many things have you heard, and it hasn't been true? Oh, but sister so-and-so now, I heard she said this about the you, 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 and this, 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 and that. And, but is it true? What is truth? See, our five senses of the body will even lie to us. Amen? Our five senses will, will grab a hold of things that, that aren't truth. So what is truth? I have a feeling that, you know what, I need a new car. I have a feeling that I need a new home. How many times have we gotten in debt because of our emotions and our feelings, but it wasn't based off the truth? Truth is that God says, you know what, you shall not borrow. You shall be a lender. Oh, how many, how many things of the world have we allowed? And, but, but the thing is, is we ponder them and we allow them to become true in our lives because we just think it. It's over and over. It's an illusion. It's manipulation. It's witchcraft. This is what Satan does. He, he, he throws out things little by little so we can take the bait. Oh, surely you shall not die. And we know that we surely, we didn't die physically, but spiritually we did. So what is the truth? Because what I feel is not the truth. What I believe is not the truth. That doesn't make it the truth. So what is the truth? My senses doesn't make it the truth. So what is truth? See, science can confirm truth, but never create truth. Right? Well, science, you know what? They, they, they can put this chemical with this chemical and that chemical with that chemical, and they just create. They didn't create. They just manifested and experienced the truth that if you put these chemicals together, it's going to make an explosion. You know, it, it could actually kill you. So the truth was right there. So they didn't create the truth. They revealed the truth. Science can never create the truth. But how many times we put our hope in something else that the, it's, just, it's just revealing the truth. It's never creating the truth. How many times do we put our hope within ourselves and we create truth through ourselves, through our emotions, through our thoughts, through our feelings, but it's not really true. Oh, he really likes me. No, he doesn't. She really likes me. No, she doesn't. She thinks you're a dog and you're you, you worthless. Amen. How many times we create these lies within ourselves? 
And then we start believing these lies that I can't do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not more than a conqueror. I'm not able to. I mean, I'm just too dumb. I'm just too darn ugly. I'm just too big. I'm just too skinny. I'm just too right. But we start believing these lies, and we start convincing ourselves of these lies. See, we have to talk about the opposite because we're very familiar with this, amen? Because, see, we wake up each and every day, and we look in the mirror. And it's a choice what we choose. Do I choose the opposite, or do I choose truth? How do I view myself? How do I see myself? How do I, you know, am I healed, or am I not healed? Am I provided for, or am I not provided for? Am I taken care of, or am I not taken care of? Colossians 3, 5 says, Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Right? It says put all those things away. They're all lies. They're not good for you. But the problem is, is if I feel like that, you know what, it's okay to look once. If it's okay to, to take one sip. If it's okay to take one snort. If it's okay, whatever it is, you know what, it can become an addiction. You know, the lies can grow. Amen? It's just one snore. It's just one. But the thing is, is I start cultivating these lies. I start believing these lies. I start telling myself these lies. And then, then, then these lies start growing and growing to where I start believing the lies. Have you ever believed your own lie? I don't know about you, but I believe my own lie. I believed I was all that at one time. I believe that I was actually, amen? Can, I, can we just talk? Can we be real? How many times have we fallen for this fruit that, that Satan throws out? That You know what? You, you have this under control. You have no addiction. You don't really have an anger problem. It's righteous anger. You just go ahead and kill them, right? Speak evil over them. It's okay. You know, you don't need them in your life. You don't need that in your life. How many times we, we experience this and we cultivate this and we grow on this? You know, it's, it's okay to look at her. Oh, because see, adultery starts with one little lie, right? Uh, it, it starts with one little look. It starts with one little back rub. She didn't just show up naked on your bed. He didn't show up just naked on your bed. It took time, amen? And, you know, I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't know of too many people that just sleep with us. It's just a stranger. Whoa, here we go. No, it, it's a, one lie after another lie, and we start believing these lies, and we start growing these lies. It's something that's planted, and it starts manifesting. This is what Satan does. That's the reason why said, you know, we have to get rid of these things. And that's the reason why too many times that when we build our, our relationships and we build our lives, we build our jobs on nothing but lies, they're going to be destroyed and they're going to be thrown away because we're going to find ourselves completely isolated and standing in the presence of Satan because we've destroyed every relationship because it was based on lies. It was based on something that we manifested and we believed ourselves because we told ourselves over and over. That's the reason why self-worth, lack of confidence within people, it comes from from within us. Satan just dangles the carrot, but we're the ones that feed it. We're the ones that say, we're no good. Oh, I'm not able to do this. I'm just this. I'm just that. I'm, I'm just too stupid. Whatever it is, we're the ones, and then we start believing the lies. I'll never be healed. I'll never be healed. I'll never happen. I'll never grow. I'll never do this. But see, lies will put us in a position where we'll be standing there by ourselves. Yes. Isolated. Because lies will be exposed. Satan's not in it for your benefit. Satan's in it to destroy. Oh, so, so how about this Saul? You know, Saul, you know, this king, he knew the truth, but then he, he went and got a fortune teller. He went and got someone else that could tell him something else because he really didn't want the truth. Because he wanted to believe something else. And too many times as Christians, how many times that we choose not to believe the truth because it, it's not what we want to hear. It's a little rough on my ears. You're telling me I have some pride? You're telling me that, you know what, I, I, I need to preach better? You're telling me that I don't know the word of God? You're telling me how to live my life? See, sometimes it's the truth that hurts, right? And sometimes we, we, we're so full of the lies that we build this wall of lies that all we can see is nothing but lies and we can't see the truth because we built this wall. We believe this lie 
And then that lie cultivated in this lie. And then those two lies cultivated in these two lies. And, and then all these lies cultivated into more lies and more lies and more lies. And then pride and arrogance and, and adultery set in, fornication. Oh, I started coveting something else, my neighbors, because I believed the lie of something else. I believe that I'm not good. I believe I'm not, not, not smart enough. I believe that I'm ugly. You know, and and all, all we're doing is, is we're building these lies. We're building relationships. We're building our life based on nothing but lies. But eventually they'll be coming down because see only the truth can sustain lies can't lies give death and too many times we're just like this Martha and Mary you know Martha and Mary sisters one's in there slaving being distracted and the other one's at the feet of Jesus but see we allow distractions to become lies it distorts the truth, and we use distractions as excuses. We use excuses as distractions. We use lies as distractions. We use everything that we can because this is what the world does. Because if it's not my way, then, then you know what? It, it, but it's not our ways. It's not about us. See, David apparently thought it was okay to sleep with Bathsheba, right? I mean, but is that truth? He thought it was truth. Uriah was thinking something different, right? So was God. See how we can easily distort? The, see how easily one lie, one look, he should have been at battle instead of home. He takes a look, lust sets in. All of its lies, adultery sets in. Now adultery went from to another lie. Now, now that lie went to murder. That murder went to, uh, it, it just, it, it, when does it stop? It stops whenever he decided to bow down to the truth. And that's when it stopped. Because what he felt was good, what he thought was good, didn't mean it was good. Right? So if I paint my house purple and I believe that's truth, that means you should believe it's truth, right? So if I paint my house hot pink or bright yellow or whatever colors and I want streamers all through it, that means it should be good to your house, right? Isn't it amazing this is how Christians do? What I think is truth should be your truth? What if your truth isn't my truth? Then what is truth? Think about it. How many times we do this? How many times that, that the Pope says something and everybody just believes it? You don't need to believe me. You need to believe the word of God. Amen? See, the other thing is, that how about this theory, this thing that we call theory? You know, we believe so much in theory. You know, whenever we read the word, I'm just going to pick on the word right now, amen? Because I, this is where we're at. How many times do we read commentaries? Commentaries are great. Theories are great. I love theories. I love commentaries. I love opinions. I love everything. But that theory, that opinion does not mean it's truth. That means it's just your opinion on the subject that you're studying. That's it. It's your opinion. See, I can have a theory about a, cor uh, a Corvette. I can have a theory about a Ferrari. I can have a theory about a mansion. I can have a theory about anything in the world. I can have a theory about a bag of Oreos, amen? I can have a theory that this is the best thing for you and it's gonna set you free. It's gonna deliver you. It's gonna make you feel good. When you're depressed and anxiety, you can just come right to that. When you're stressed out, you come. I can come up with a great theory, but does that mean it's true? So what is truth? What is truth within our, our lives? See, lies becomes truth. As we continue on with them, we believe adultery is okay. We believe glutton's okay. We believe drugs are okay. Ask any drug addict. They're, they're going to be like, okay. A lot of them, whenever, the ones that I've ministered to, the ones, until they've gotten to the truth, they were never delivered. Because they believe they're living in the truth. The alcoholic, the one that's jealous, the one that has an anger problem. So what is the truth? So now we just experience the opposite of the truth, which is everything of the world. It's lies. It's something that will please the flesh. You know, Jesus made it very clear to the disciples and, and to the Pharisees and Sadducees. You know, why don't your disciples wash their hands? Well, let me just tell you, there's nothing about truth in that. That's a religious spirit, and that's tradition. Where does it say in the Bible about that? Jesus called that out. And unfortunately, the church has brought in religious and tradition items. We brought in our own opinions. Amen? See, it's not for us to interpret the Bible. The Bible's supposed to interpret us. As soon as I think I can interpret the word of God, then I'm putting myself as God. But the word of God is supposed to interpret me. 
It's supposed to tell me. It's supposed to share with me. It's supposed to, it's supposed to have reign and rule over me. So what is the truth? The truth is something that's absolute. Some, the, it's something that doesn't change. It's something that is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the truth is the word of God. It's Jesus Christ Almighty. Amen? That's what the truth is. But see, the world will tell you it's everything else but the truth. But the only way we can experience the truth is through Jesus Christ. That's why he said, you know what? This is my word. It's inspired by Holy spirit it might be written it's only written by one author but it's pen penmanship is through several different individuals amen there's 66 books in over 40 different penships but it all lines up and it is the truth because i said i am the truth i am the light i am everything that i said i am i come to give light to experience to expose the truth i'm letting everyone know that the way that you're living is not in truth and there's a better way for you there's a better life for you but the problem is we are so concerned about the world that we're living in instead of the world that we are going to be living in. I'm just wanting to know what truth is. The truth is, John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He is the truth. John 1, 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus is the truth. He was the truth standing there in front of Pilate. He was the truth standing there in front of the Jews. See, the Jews was trying to use every lie that there was. Every Pharisee and Sadducee was trying to use every lie that they could to, to put Jesus in the midst of a lie, to persecute him, to make sure that he's going to be destroyed. Because, you know, they weren't supposed to have a trial at the high priest's house, but they did. They were not obeying the law, so they were already in the midst of a lie. Then they brought other accusers to accuse this man of unrighteousness, but nothing could stand because he was the truth. All the truth went all the way. The truth was crowned, all with the thorn of crowns that we should have been crowned in. The truth gave up its life that we may have life. The truth went all the way. See, sometimes the truth, you might just have to suffer for the truth. But I'm here to tell you, it's all, it's okay. But the truth had to prevail. The truth did prevail. We can believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ because, oh, it lines up from the beginning to the end. All the way from Genesis to Exodus, there's no contradictions within his word. There's nothing that says there's an old God, a new God. He is God. He's the same God. It's Jehovah. He was the same yesterday, today, and forever. We have proof throughout the scripture from the beginning that the Messiah is coming all the way after his death that it's a resurrection because we are the only ones that has a religion that has all the truth that there's a resurrection Lord of Lords and King of Kings that he went on the cross he put the nail holes in his hands and in his feet and on his side he was pierced blood and water ran out he was put in the grave oh they went three days later the grave was empty oh this Jesus is appearing he's actually telling his disciples if you don't believe me go ahead and put your finger in the hole of this nail go ahead and put your finger in the side oh we're the only ones that have a religion that we have a lord of lords that resurrected we have the resurrection power and it's just not by my word it's just not by your word all people saw this thousands of individuals saw jesus hang on a cross thousands of individuals watched jesus be put in the tomb thousands of individuals watched jesus all resurrected and walked in the city oh let me just walk walk around and show myself hundreds and thousands of people saw the living Christ and saw him ascend into heaven. That's the truth. And there's nothing else but the truth. But Jesus. John 1.17 says, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning and he is the end. He's the only one that gave up his life. Well, pastor, how about these other religions? Okay, let's, let, I'm glad you want to go there. Let's go to these other religions. Because one, they have no resurrection. Two, they have no Lord and Savior that gave up their life. None of the other religions, that Buddha, Abba, whatever they want to call them, none of those idols ever gave up their life that you would be saved. Jesus gave up his life. Jesus shed his blood for the remission of sins. Go to their grave and you're gonna find their bones because there's no resurrection. Because they had no dominion over death. Jesus had dominion over death. Because he's God. Think about it. They had no power, they had no authority. All they had was lies. Every other religion besides Jesus Christ is the way is nothing but a lie. 
And unfortunately, too many of us, we believe the lies. Isn't it amazing how all these other religions has a beginning and an end? Isn't it? Well, you know what? God is the beginning and the end. But yeah, just look. Look at their Lord and Savior. At this date, this person was born. At this date, this person died. And they're still in the grave. At this religion, you know, we believe this prophet is, is a Savior. This person died here. and this They didn't give up their life. They died for whatever reasons. They're still in the grave. And it's amazing that their date exists on a time frame that was created by God. God is from the beginning to the end. There is no date because he's a creation of time. And every other religion is established on the time that was created by God Almighty. Where's their power? Where's their truth? What is truth? Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. We have to understand the truth. We have to understand that God is Jesus, that God is truth, that there is nothing else but truth. And that's the reason why he said that, you know what, narrow is the way because there's only one way to get to the Father in heaven and it's through me, through Jesus. But the world will tell you all these other lies and tell you all these other things. But Jesus said, you know what, this is the reason why it's narrow. I know that all these other options are out there that you can bow down to Buddha. You can eat your Oreos. You can believe in this. You can do whatever. You, whatever you, you can go all the way to do whatever you want, but this, this is what we do. We believe these lies. But Jesus said, no, it's very narrow. And it's through me. And it's only through me. Because that's the truth. What other books has hundreds of and thousands of individuals that were healed, performing miracles, that's dated. That's just not by one man. It's by several men. You can go to the Egyptians' writings. If you study the word, you can go to the Egyptians' writings. And even though they didn't believe Jesus was Messiah, Lord and Savior, they put down in their books of other gods that Jesus was a healer. So it's documented, the truth is, in other religions. But they have no Lord and Savior like we do. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is life. Jesus changes the situation. So what is the truth? It's the word of God. It's everything the word of God says. If it's the truth, why don't we run to the truth? Why don't we buy stuff by the truth? Why don't we marry by the truth? Why don't we have relations by the truth? Why don't we go to work by the truth? Why don't we become employers as the truth? See, the truth is narrow. See, everyone knows about this Ravi Zacharias. He just passed away this year with cancer, a very rare cancer. But I, I, I always loved Ravi Zacharias and I always studied him and I always listened to him. But here's a quote from Ravi Zacharias. As a Christian apologist, Ravi Zacharias puts it, the fact is the truth matters, especially when you're on the receiving end of a lie. And nowhere is the, this more important than in the area of faith and religion. Eternity is an awfully long time to be wrong. We don't like the truth all the time, do we? Because it hurts. It changes. Uh, we don't like the truth because that means I might not be able to get my Oreos. Amen? Uh, we don't like the truth because that means I might not be able to lie. We don't like the truth because that means I might not be able to do what I want to do. That means I can't be jealous. That means I can't be, I, you know, I, I want to be bitter. I want to have unforgiveness. I want to hate people. I want, you know, I want them destroyed. I don't want to love. You know, I, I want what I want. I want to get that job that I want however I want. If I have to steal, sleep through it, kill, whatever I have to do, I, I want it. But the truth sets us free the truth gives us life and it's the truth if we receive it gives us a place in heaven with Jesus in eternity think about it you know I've thought of this you know, at what time in my life has the word of God ever led me wrong it hasn't it hasn't. But my lies and my distorted truth, see, that's what Satan's good at is distorting the truth, has led me down the wrong way. Jealousy, anger, hatred, bitterness, lies, stealing, condemnation, all, right? But the truth has set me free. I know who I am. I, I, I know who I am. I, I know where I'm going. 
See, God said in Deuteronomy 30, 19, he's put life and death, he put blessing and cursing before us. So we know the truth. But see, as Christians, this is the problem, this is we, we don't always want the truth, right? That's why people leave churches that speak the truth because they can't handle the truth because they really don't want the truth. That's why this place isn't full. It will be because there's people that are coming to the truth because they're realizing the truth is what sets them free, is what heals them, what manifests God's power, what provides for them. It's the truth. But see, as Christians, though, we've allowed one lie to cultivate another lie to cultivate another lie. And see, what we're doing is if we allow the lies to keep going and we believe in our lies and we grow our lies and we get prideful. We think we know everything and we think adultery is okay. We think stealing is okay. And then that, that one theft goes to another theft. That one lie goes to another lie. Adultery goes from one person to the next person. Oh, you know what? And, and lies are nothing but to destroy what God Almighty wants to put together. Right? See, Satan wants to put every lie into every marriage to destroy something, a covenant of marriage that is God's. And he'll try every lie. And the thing is, is unfortunately too many of us, we bite on those lies. We bite on that jealousy. We bite on that anger. We bite on that lust. We start looking. We start doing. And all we have to do is realize, you know what? We're in the midst of lies. And we, what happens is we start building this wall to the point where all these lies starts building this wall that keeps me from God where I can't see the truth. Because the more I manifest these lies, the more I manifest that I'm good with money, I know what I'm doing, I'm good with drinking, I'm good with drugs, I'm good with my anger, I'm good with my jealousy, all we're doing is we're building this wall that's hardening our hearts where we'll never see the truth. And I'm talking about the lies, I'm talking about glutton. I'm talking about lies. I'm talking about adultery. I'm talking about, about thievery. I'm talking about jealousy. I'm talking about addictions. I'm, I'm, th this is what I'm talking about. Hear me. Hear me. I'm talking about pride and arrogance. And we do this and we ponder it and we start meditating on it and we start believing it till we have a wall that is so far that we cannot see God. We wonder why our prayers aren't being answered. We wonder why we, we can't see God whenever I need God because we built a wall before God of nothing but lies. Nothing but lies. I can't even see the truth because all I see is my lies. I've built something. And whenever, oh, you know what? Then I'm going to find myself in a place that I'm covered with lies. I'm saturated in lies. And where do I go? Where is the truth? Pharaoh's heart was hardened. He couldn't see the truth. And his lies ended up destroying him and killing him because he couldn't see the truth. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be a Pharaoh. Amen? We need to come to God, and we need to realize that he is the truth, that he is life. And then I can come when I understand he's the truth. He's my Lord and Savior. Oh, we're going to get into this next week. I can take. The wall wasn't built all in one place. It was one brick at a time. See, I can come up here and I can take this lie and I can apply the truth to it. He'll do the work as well. But see, I have to take a step. And I have to realize, that, you know, this is a lie. And I want the truth. And when I realize that, I can start tearing down this wall of lies. Oh, oh I see you, God. I, where I can see God and I can experience God. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you next week where we can take the wall and we're going to take it down one piece at a time and we're going to build a stairway all to heaven. Amen. It's not out of pride. It's because I'm building a stairway to go to heaven because I'm drawing nigh to him. I want a closer relationship with him. So I'm going to tear down the lies. I'm going to apply truth to it and I'm going to grow and build my relationship towards God. Because this is what lies do. They build a wall. They build a wall. This is how Satan comes in every Christian's life. He doesn't come in with a wall. Hear me. He comes in with one lie. Let me use an example. COVID. Okay? Don't tune me out if you're online. And don't tune me out here. There's a truth about it, right? Now, it depends which doctor you listen to. And it depends which politician you listen to. So we don't know the truth about it, right? 
We really don't. Is it worse than the flu? Is it not? We have some statistics that show that the flu has still killed more people than the COVID, which is not good, but thank God that, you know what, we have some numbers out there, but we don't know all the truth, but what we do have to be careful of, and we do know, we know Jesus is the truth. And, and, And see, Satan will use this COVID as a lie of fear. He gives us this lie. We hide ourselves and we manifest. And before the end of the day, before the end of the week, before the end of the month, we're determined that we're gonna die. We're absolutely afraid. We're absolutely scared, not realizing our God has dominion over this. Knowing that I will never experience death And and I'm just using COVID as an example because this is what we're experiencing right now. Whether we, we don't know all the truth, the truth is gonna come out because the truth always comes out because when God shines light, all, man, everything that's not truth is floated to the top and we scoop it out, amen? Let me just put it in some nice words. But let me just tell you, this is how the enemy comes. See, he comes in with one little lie, one little lie to build a wall to separate you from God to separate you from the truth because he doesn't want you successful. He doesn't want you to see that you are God's creation. He doesn't want you to have your purpose and your plan that God has hope for you. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you. Oh man, I've given you an expectation of hope and, and I, I've given you blessings. I have the best for you. But see, Satan wants to throw these lies out and this is, it. just think of what COVID. And I'm using this because it's real right now. And I'm gonna offend some people and I'm okay with it. I'm all right. Because we got to speak the truth. But remember, the truth talks if we let it. What is Satan doing? Can we be real? Satan's mightiest tool is to isolate us. Let me isolate the body of Christ. Because if I isolate you, you can't get hope from someone else. If I isolate you, you, your faith is going to deteriorate. If I isolate you, you know what, from God, then you you know what, there is no hope in your life. In fact, I'm going to be able to put in fear and I'm going to be able to control your life for the rest of this time, for the rest of eternity. I'll be able to control you and I'll convince you of nothing but of lies. So what's the first thing that COVID did? We, We isolate ourselves, Right? And I'm not saying it's right or wrong. Hear my heart. I'm just telling you, this is how the enemy works if we're not aware of it. Because this is how he works with lies, pride, and arrogance, and manipulation within our hearts as it grows and it manifests into something that we will guard ourselves from the truth and not receive. Because we won't change. But he comes in and isolates. He knows he can't destroy God's image, so he covers it up with a mask. Oh, now, now, now he, he's put us in a position that we're getting okay to have a mark on us because now all the kids have to wear an ID. Now all the kids have to have their temperature measured and scanned. And now they all have to be marked on the arm to let them know that it's okay to go to class. So now we're creating something if we're not careful of that. You know what? Now what is that? We're getting familiar with being marked red, scanned, right? This is how the enemy works. I'm not saying it's not right for a season. Hear my heart. But what I'm saying is you didn't have adultery overnight. You didn't have jealousy overnight. You didn't have a lying spirit overnight. You didn't have a stealing spirit overnight. You did not cultivate pride overnight. It came in in little seeds one after another until we are okay with just being okay with the lies. And until we expose it with the truth, we'll never tear down the wall. And it starts with Jesus Christ. Every head bowed. Hey everyone, hey Pastor Daniel. I hope that you enjoyed the message today. Powerful word, powerful word from God. And we want you to get connected with us. We want to hear from you. If you gave your heart to the Lord today from the message, we want to hear from you. Email us at admin at peakworship.com.
peakworship.com and give us the good news so we could celebrate with you. And we want you to check out the website, peakworship.com. And we want you to like us on Facebook and Instagram. You can like me on um, Facebook and Instagram personally. We want to get connected with you. We want to share our hearts with you. And we want to hear more about what's going on in your life. So make sure that you get plugged in and get connected.